Hey guys, even here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting things. So first off, we have a Hunter Labrada physique update, and Hunter right now is in a very very good place. So he's 13 weeks out and he's 266 pounds. And it's very interesting what he writes here. So he says, the coolest thing to me when looking at this is knowing how many bullets I have left in a gun. Zero minutes of cardio, still in a caloric surplus, no fat burners and no fun stuff yet, devil emoji. If you are a competitive bodybuilder, you know what this means. It means that he's not training hard yet. Uh, so he also says, I truly feel like I could be ready in six weeks if I needed to be. So get ready to watch me grow into the show. His weight again is 266. He also talks about his nutrition and he says he only eliminated junk food and that's how he lost the weight and that's how he started to look better because he lost some water retention but his food is really high, he doesn't do any cardio and he actually broke a few PRs in the past 10 days and he plans on breaking a few more in the next weeks. So imagine that, I mean he's prepping, he's 13 weeks out and he looks this good and he's breaking his personal records and he's not even dieting, basically just eliminating junk. He couldn't be in a better place right now. And this right here is his diet, which I found very weird. I talked about this in a previous video, but now we have something interesting about that. Of course, very obviously, you can see that four of his six meals are actually way, way isolate. So he's not even eating meat. And everybody's talking about how whey, how protein powders are not good for you. They are not good enough, they are not as good as real food, as meat, right? As fish, as eggs, and stuff like that. Everybody's talking about that. But then again, you can see Hunter Labrada, one of the best bodybuilders in the world right now, top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, top 8, actually making crazy progress year after year, month after month, let's say week after week. And four out of his six meals, and not even in the off-season, but in the prep, in the prep for a show, guys, he's eating whey four times in a day. Yeah, he's a genetic freak for sure, but still, there are other bodybuilders at the Mr. Olympia stage who are also genetic freaks, but they're eating meat, and they're growing probably the same rate, and Hunter is growing at a faster rate than most of the guys. So, that tells us something, doesn't it? And we can talk about this for days, but what I found very interesting is Fouad Abiyad actually talking about this because he knows Hunter, they're, they're, they're I guess friendly and uh, Fuad seems to not have checked his Instagram, haven't really seen this post but he was asked this question in a Q&A and uh, this is his response it's a short version, I cut out a couple of parts because he's saying the same thing over and over you can watch his entire Q&A on his YouTube channel but this is his impression basically I saw a post where Hunter Labrada was 280 grams of protein in his diet from whey isolate I always heard that the preferred way to take intake protein should be whole food. Can whey replace upwards of 50% of my protein intake and still get gains? Assuming training's on point. It is not a good idea to get the bulk of your protein or half your protein from protein shakes. And this is com coming from someone who owns a supplement company. So trust me, I want you to buy more protein, but I just don't think it's advisable. I would venture to say, because I know Hunter, that that 280 grams of protein in his diet is not just from whey isolate. There must be some type of misunderstanding there, or he's getting in a ton of protein and he's actually just adding more through shakes. But I, it just it really doesn't sound 100% right to me because that would mean uh, he's having three shakes a day at like 90 grams each or you know four shakes a day at whatever uh 70 grams each and i just don't don't see that being possible so i would re-ask him that question and see if that's true but even if it is i wouldn't compare myself to hunter labrada hunter labrada is a freak so that's what fuara bial thinks about this whole thing he doesn't even believe it <laughs> But then in the end he also says that uh, it might be possible because Hunter is a freak. But here's a post of Hunter where he actually addressed this situation. So he says, wanted to touch on something that I received quite a bit of comments about last check-in and that is uh, the four way isolate shakes. Yes, uh, that's what I've been doing for the last two months. Before that, for the last eight years, I had drank two cups of egg whites and two cups of oats for my first and last meal during the off season. I choose to replace the egg whites with hydrolyzed isolate uh, as an experiment to see what it would do to my digestion. And I can honestly say the difference has been shocking. So much less bloat in digestion and gas. So there you go, he explains that he's actually doing it and he's making progress, crazy progress. So I guess this means 
that either Hunter is a freak and that's why he can utilize this kind of diet, or that actually anybody can do it. And that would be, this would be great. <laughs> that would make it easy for many bodybuilders. I'm sure opinions are divided when it comes to this. I'm sure most people will say this is not a good idea, but Hunter has the results. So you tell me, what do you think? Alright, next we have Hassan Mustafa with a real physique update. So this is what he looks like right now. All those photos and videos that we were actually seeing this past couple of days were, um, were misleading. So that's not his physique. This is what he looks like right now. This is how shredded he actually is at three and a half weeks out of New York Pro. And yeah, this makes more sense. The previous photos that he posted also were looking something like this. Maybe a little bit less shredded because he did, he did get leaner. I mean, these guys, these big guys, they get lean fast because they have so much muscle, their metabolisms are super crazy, and when they, you know, introduce certain uh, kinds of gear, uh, when the, the diet is coming closer to the show, and when they start training harder, doing more cardio, eating less food, eating less junk at least, they get shredded so easily. So here is Hassan at, thir at three weeks out, actually, and he looks, he looks good. Reminds me a lot of Phil Heath actually with these super narrow shoulders, big arms and this kind of 3D type of look. No, not on the level of Phil Heath, but he's getting there. I mean, he's a youngster basically in IBB. He hasn't been competing for many years, maybe a few, few years, two years maybe. And right now he looks great. He looks like he can be a winner of the New York Pro. But I don't know about that because I've just seen Nick Walker's update and this guy looks absolutely insane. I'm definitely way more impressed by this physique update than the previous one of Hassan. I mean, take a look at this guy. Take a look at the conditioning, the graininess. This is gonna be his best by far, and he knows that. He knows that this is New York Pro we're talking about, and he has a legitimate chance of actually winning the New York Pro and getting that ring. So that's why he's giving it all of his. I'm sure he's giving it all of his. He's doing it 100%. Uh, and he talks about that. He's really, really devoted. Uh, he is on a really high level of, of commitment. He is like going in a bed at the same time, eating the meals at the same time. Nothing can can uh, disturb his prep. Nothing. Not even girls. No, not nothing. So he knows what he's doing. He knows how focused he needs to be. And uh, in my opinion, right now, he's my top runner. I would bet on him. I think he's going to win the New York Pro. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. And no, I don't think it's gonna be Blessing of Adibu. No, no. I mean, he looks great, sure. He has very interesting photos. He does have a great physique, for sure. He can be probably in, like, top 5, top 6 of the New York Pro, but to win a show? Nah, he's not that caliber, in my opinion. I could be wrong, we'll see that on stage, but I don't think he has that muscularity. He doesn't have that kind of density to his physique. He does have very, very good genetics, but there are some missing parts. Like, um, his back could be thicker... Uh, also, his arms, his biceps could be peakier. There are some features that the the other like top three guys have that Blasting doesn't really have. I mean, cut him a break. He's a rookie. He's having a pro debut in two weeks, and after that, the New York Pro is gonna be like his second show. But you can count that as a pro debut as well. I mean, he created this kind of drama just to make his name more relevant in bodybuilding. He created a lot of hype for him and. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. But let's be realistic. To beat uh, to beat Hassan Mustafa, Justin Rodriguez, and Nick Walker, yeah, not gonna happen. I don't think so. All right. Next, we have an update of Phil Heath. He posted this on his story, and he looks tiny. He looks really small. I'm hoping he's only out angled. I hope these guys, these men's physique guys, are just really big, really tall, and they make him look uh, really small. Or Phil Heath really lost all of his gains, basically. But here you can see when he's standing in front of them, he doesn't really look that small. And here you can see his arms and shoulders and everything. He has the mass. Phil, he doesn't have a big frame, right? I mean, he's a short guy and he has a small frame, narrow shoulders. And in the offseason, like the last year, I mean, he, he relaxes a little. He doesn't really go full-blown cycles uh, all year round. He doesn't need to. He achieved his mass. He can lose some fullness and size, and he can get it back when he starts prepping. It's all about the conditioning, and in his case, conditioning is really not the problem. He can get the conditioning down easily. What is the problem is the bubble gut. He needs to work on his stomach, his midsection. And it seems like he is working on that. And downsizing right now is a good thing for that. I mean, he can learn how to control his stomach a little bit better. He can practice uh, vacuums and stuff. So it might be a great thing, him being downsized, if he actually plans on competing. He didn't announce retirement. Last year we were speculating, is he retired or not? He didn't announce it, that's why he competed. 
This time he's not announcing it. I'm guessing he's gonna be competing a few more years. And right now, yeah, he looks downsized, but that's fine. It's off season, and uh, I'm sure he can get the size back just like this. What is important is that he's practicing vacuums, actually, that he's trying to learn how to control his stomach, his midsection, and that's all that matters. He has the size, he can get it back, he can get the conditioned. The only way to become the Mr. Olympia champion once again and to actually get that 8th title, possibly a few more, is if he learns how to control the midsection, which seems to be something he's working on right now. Alright, for the end we have actually two guest posings of two great bodybuilders. First we have Rolly Winkler, who looks like a freaking monster right now. I mean, he's probably the biggest bodybuilder in the world right now at this point. And uh, he, no, he doesn't look like he's gonna be jumping into the New York Pro as I thought. No way, no way, he looks too, too fat, too chubby, too watery, whatever. Not three weeks out, no way. Uh, but he looks great, I mean, he looks big. And that's something that Roll is really known for, so it's not really much of a surprise for me, and probably for you. I just hope he improved on that lower back that he needs to, to improve on, and uh, that's it. The question is, can I see him win the Mr. Olympia later in the year if everything goes well for him? Absolutely, I can. What about you? And for the very end, we have something really beautiful for you guys. It is Keon Pearson, posing routine. He's doing a guest posing here and he looks absolutely phenomenal. This is probably the most aesthetic bodybuilder in the world right now in any division, really. I mean, look at the vacuum, look at the vacuum. I and mean, he's a bodybuilder now, he's not classic, but that vacuum, wow, wow, it just, it just helps. It helps his physique, it looks amazing. It doesn't matter if he's classic man's physique or bodybuilding or 212 or whatever, that vacuum makes his physique look so much greater. What he needs to work on is the same thing that he ever, that he always had to work on, and that is his chest, it's a little bit weaker, and his hamstrings, I would say his legs from behind need work, and the chest, the back is absolutely phenomenal, you will see that in a moment, the arms are just great, uh, the midsection, it's starting to get a little distended, I'm gonna show that to you as well, I'm gonna pause a few parts of the video, but overall, just a really beautiful, a very, a really beautiful posing routine. Uh, with a song, it's even better, but I can't play it because of the copyrights. You can check it out on his Instagram. Look at the back. Look at the back. Wow, what a back. I mean, he really grew that back. Take a look at this. How did he do it? I mean, he looks huge right now. He looks absolutely enormous. Look at his most muscular. Wow. Wow, that most muscular. That was amazing. He's, he's gonna flex it again uh, when, he, when his posing routine is over. Here, yeah, amazing biceps, really aesthetic physique, really beautiful physique, I gotta say it. And now he's gonna do, of course, first front double bicep with that crazy vacuum, another most muscular, crab most muscular, and take a look at this most muscular he's about to do. Take a look at this one, a second. Look at this. Wow, wow, what a, what a most muscular. He grew so much, it's such a beautiful most muscular, I haven't really seen uh, this aesthetic of a bodybuilder lately. This Keon Pearson man, he's really something, he's really something, I can see him winning the Mr. Olympia in 212, not only 212, but maybe even in the open, I don't think we have, we have seen such genetically, look at this, look at this, such genetically gifted guy in a long time really. Let's check out this most muscular once again, it really reminds me of Phil Heath in 2011, or 2012 or 13, not that big of course, but with the shape and the, and the size, the proportions, Look at this, it really does remind me of Phil Heath at his best. Wow, wow, what a physique. This is what I'm worried about, look at the stomach here. He grew a lot, he grew a lot and now he needs to start learning how to control that stomach because with growth this happens. Sometimes he lets it hang and he probably never had this issue before and that's why he doesn't really pay much attention to it. It is something he should actually start working on. Control the midsection, Kian. You grew so much, of course you're gonna have some distension. He has an amazing, beautiful physique, I just don't want to see it ruined with a bubble gut. I think he's gonna fix it, and I think this size game is not gonna hurt his uh, physique, his aesthetics overall in the long run. I mean, at least I hope so. But again, again, amazing physique, amazing. I haven't really expected him to look this good on stage, and I can't wait to see him that Chicago Pro winning that show, easily, easily. I'm not sure if it's gonna be 212, probably, yeah, because he's gonna qualify for the Mr. Olympia by winning that show, but if he did the Open, he would do very well against Hunter, Sergio, and the other guys as well. 
No, he wouldn't beat those top guys because he still needs to add more, more tissue, you know, more thickness. But he would look great against them as well because he's absolutely outstanding bodybuilder right now. Outstanding. I love this physique. What do you guys think about Keon Pearson? Is he gonna have a distended stomach? I don't want to say a bubble gut, but yeah, I said it. What do you think about whichever part of this video? Tell me. Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I always read all the comments and I respond to as much as I can, so let's discuss guys, whichever part of this video you found interesting, tell me down below in the comment section, whatever comes to your mind, like the video once again, subscribe to more, a lot of bodybuilding content like this, and thank you again so much for watching, all the best guys and bye bye.